Okay, we're up this morning. Man, we are having fun. Good Monday in November. Sun's out. It's going to be a beautiful day out there. Hope you guys are having a fantastic time out there. A uh, couple, th couple pieces of business to go over. If you're a capper, you're going to get a call today or tomorrow from two of the beautiful ladies here in the office advising you where lunch is going to be and uh, that you have made the grade for this dinner. And so we realize that maybe a couple of them, I've already talked to uh, Audra, and uh, she was supposed to be there, but she's not going to be able to make it. She's having some medical stuff done. And so we're very uh, happy for her, and we want, uh, we'll save all her goodies. But the girls are setting it up. We had originally planned to have lunch at Javi's. Uh, they can't seem to communicate with us, so we will, we're still trying to get that done today. If it doesn't get done today, we'll find a suitable place. I think McDonald's has got a deal going on hamburgers or something, don't they, Carly? You know, and get, get some Mickey D's or Dairy Queen has them three tacos for like, you know, $2.99 or $1.99 or something. We'll get something done. The main thing is to get together and celebrate y'all's successes. I want you guys to, you know, get ready. Uh, going to have a little Thanksgiving uh, potluck. There'll be some more coming out on that uh, next week. We're just uh, we're sprinting to the finish line, trying to get everything done. Get your Christmas presents done. Good morning, Jennifer Shelton. How are you? As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about one of your deals today. And I uh, wanted to go over a couple of things, guys. I want you to pay very, very close attention. Uh, last week we had an agent uh, uh, that... We we got the we had we had referred the client to a very one of our very good lenders and she did a good job. Pay attention to the warning signs that you're going to have problems with your deals up front. If you kick it down the road, guess what? You have problems down the road. Hi Tammy, I'm having lunch with Tammy today. We're going to sit down and, and meeting of the minds. By the way, she's got the mind today, so I'm not. I don't. So we're going to have a good time there. And uh, oh my God, we got Karen on this morning. I want to talk to you. We've got. We brought in three or four new agents in the last three weeks. Karen, I think, is written. I hope it's two deals, Karen. It looks like two deals uh, over the weekend or, or since Friday. Uh, she is killing it. We've got another one that's written two deals on Jenny's team. We've got another one that's written a deal. We have, I'll tell you, rookie of the year that for this year is pretty well settled, but next year it's going to be, uh, oh my gosh, it's going to be a bloodbath out there. I love it. Excuse me, Karen. I am sorry. She has three. She has written three deals. She's been with us a, two weeks. Yeah, not even two weeks, hardly. So bless her. And she's really great. She came in with Tracy Bailey. Uh, she came in and sat down. I got to tease her a little bit in training, and she was awesome. Um, and, and I've gotten to talk to her a few times. She's very understanding. She gets my personality. We've even had some phone. Hello, Patty. When's your sister ready? Come on now. Tell her I got stuff for her to do. I'm telling you, Patty Carrillo's on this morning. I want to go over a couple things. Uh, had a situation, Jordan had the loan, and when Jordan got the loan, the first day uh, that she had it, she notified everybody. Yeah, not soon enough, Patty. She notified everybody that the uh, appraisal was going to be out a while. And so our agent sent over to the other agent that the appraisal couldn't get done. He needed to file an extension, blah, 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 blah. And the, pay, the appraisal couldn't get done until this day in November. Well, the other agent, and the property's in a place that doesn't sell fast. It's, you know, it's not, there wasn't multiple offers. The other agent said, that's not acceptable, blah, 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 blah. Well, instead of dealing with the problem then, we kicked the can down the road. Well, guess what? The appraiser never changed his tune, ever. And because we didn't deal with that, 31 days later, everybody's jumping up and down screaming what's going on. What's going on is what was going on the very first day of October, and now that we're on the second day of November, guess what? The problem's still here. Guys, it's tough out there, I know, and we don't want to have confrontations, but don't kick a problem down the road. At that point, you still had an option period, you still had finance days, you still had all kinds of stuff that protected the buyer. And what happens in that case and you look at the, where the house was, uh, it was in an area that were not highest and best. They stay on the market for a while. It's out in the middle of nowhere. All you had to say was tell your seller then we're opting out during our option period. If you're not going to give us these days, appraisals are delayed right and left. Okay? And if the other agent didn't buy it, then he can, you can write right on a termination. 
Other agents said seller would not extend because of appraisals, et cetera, and so on. And the seller's going to read that as they sign it, and they're going to look at their agent and go, what do you mean? It says, we wouldn't extend. So then the problem gets straightened out because this seller, this house had been on the market. This seller was not going to sell it to anybody else very quick. And so those are things that go on. Uh, Jen Shelton, it's, this is a combination of, I don't know, headstrong buyer and probably one of the stupidest lenders I've seen in about three years, okay? Well, not three years, in, in the last year. Situation coming up on closing day, uh, couldn't get this done, couldn't, well, first of all, let's go, let's back up. Jen, you're going to have this Cross Point Mortgage out of Houston. I don't really have the deal, but man, they're, they're horrible, absolutely horrible. And uh, so anyway, the, she says, I've got some lenders. Would you like to talk to them? Absolutely not. I have my lender. Okay. Well, the guy's one of these. He, the, the buyer's one of these. Every time something goes wrong, it's never his fault, and he wants to bail out. Hey, Chad, how are you? Are you in Houston? Are you up here still hunting? He may be back down in Houston. But anyway, the buyer's one of these. Every time something goes wrong, well, I'm bailing out. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Well, we get down to it. Uh, the appraisal's not coming in. Okay, well, they had plenty of time. So he's in Houston. Have good morning down there, brother. Uh, they, had, they had plenty of time to get the appraisal. Okay, not a big deal. Okay, so the lender, the, the, one of the reasons the appraisal didn't get in, there was a mix-up on getting into the house for the this, that, and the other. So that delayed it. And the other agent, a superior agent, absolutely amazing, uh, with, got with Jen and said, look, there's not an issue. We'll extend. It's kind of our fault and this, that, and the other. We don't, we're not going to worry about it. And so those type of things, uh, those type of things are just absolutely uh, going to happen at times. And man, when you have two agents pulling the rope the same direction, so they get with this lender, who's supposed to have all this crap together. Okay, they get with this lender, and the lender says, "Ah, no problem." And they say, "We're going to put them on a temporary lease." Yeah, well, we'll close it the next couple of working days. It's not going to be a big deal. It'll close. It'll close. It'll close. Well, guess what? Yeah, exactly. Tammy, smart lenders are adjusting their process to match the needs of the buyers. Lazy in, in, are blaming COVID-19. Well, we're getting a lot of that, too. Well, this didn't have anything to do with COVID. This had to do with a dumbass, okay? So here's what happened. People get in the house. They got a, <laughs> Then they have a plumbing leak, but they get all that fixed, okay? The sellers and the seller's agent are magnificent. They're not with us, but I won't tell you they're absolutely magnificent. They're good people. And so they're doing everything, and you got a buyer that every time something goes wrong just wants to scream, I'm quitting, I'm quitting, you know, the entitlement crowd. And so this type of deal, and we, we love them, you know, it, it happens. I don't blame them for being frustrated, okay? And this buyer chose this lender. This lender is telling everybody, yeah, go ahead. Temporary lease not going to be a problem. We're going to close it in a day or two anyway. Well, they're not going to close it in a day or two. Because it's an FHA loan and the idiot lender ordered a conventional appraisal. The appraiser that went out and did it doesn't do FHA appraisals. All he does is conventional. So somebody's paying a buttload of money to get the dang thing reappraised by the 17th and it was supposed to close last week. This is what happens when you have an incompetent lender. And then come to find out the buyer, they've got some issues with some family members and stuff that are sick. And so that causes some stress and we understand. But in the meantime, the buyer chose a lender that was incompetent. The buyer chose a lender that I can't drive to their office, that our agent can't drive to their office and sit down and go, how could you be so dumb? You order the appraisal. The appraisal company sends back, we've accepted this conventional appraisal. The lender's telling everybody, oh yeah, got this, got this, got this, got this. Telling everybody what they want to hear, and they're so incompetent they haven't done their job. I have never seen in my life the lack of care that we have out in this industry right now. We have people taking positions that aren't win-win, other realtors, when they don't have the strong when they don't have the strong hand to play and we need to just call them on it and say, look, we want a win-win and your seller's in a market that 
your, that house is in a market that it was on the market 100 days. You don't have the option here. You either do, and it, and it all boiled down to the guy wanted to pay check on the other side. We have lenders that are lending in our area that we can't go sit in their office and get our hands around their neck and say, what the hell happened? Okay. And then they do things like order the wrong appraisal. This is pretty basic. This is lending 101. What kind of loan have you got? It's an FHA. Then why would you order a conventional? It was never a conventional contract. It's been an FHA from day one. The contract was FHA, the third party financing addendum was FHA, and the pre-approval letter was FHA. And they ordered a conventional appraisal. The incompetence is large out there, folks. You've got to pay attention to protect your customer. All right, Jen had no idea what was going on. I got a call from the lender on the other one, and she sent me the email trail where on the very first day of October, she had told all parties involved, it will be at least the 11th of November before I can get an appraisal done. Hey, Tony, how are you? It'll be at least the 11th of November. She was honest right up front. While we're in the option period, while we're in the finance days, we did not deal with this. We kicked this down the road. It's 100% our fault. I'll blame the lender if I gotta blame the lender. You know that, you just heard me do it. But the lenders that we recommend, she picked up the phone and called me and said, you may get a phone call. I don't get a lot of them anymore. You guys are very, very good. Hey, Tana, how are you, Tana? The, uh, these amazing, we have some amazing agents out there, but every now and then, we, you know, we get where we don't want to have a confrontation. You got a bully on the other end. We held all the cards here. You're in an area where the house has been on the market. You're in an area that does not sell fast. You're in an area, okay, that there is no way in God's green earth. It's so far. It's in LaRue, Texas. It's so far out in the middle, middle of nowhere, okay, that it's not going to sell fast. And you got an agent acting like the things in downtown Dallas and it's priced 10 grand under market, and he's got 5,700 offers. We have to realize who we're negotiating with and their tactics, and we have to remember whose money we're spending. This guy was about to spend his seller's money. If he would have had me as a buyer's agent, I would have said, termination coming over. Go ahead and tell your seller who's had this house on the market in an area that it is absolutely almost impossible to sell in today's world. There's a few of them out there. You go ahead and tell them that because of your actions, you've negotiated their money off the table. Guys, whose money are you negotiating with? If we hadn't had a very good seller and a very good okay, uh, seller's agent, listing agent, on Jen Shelton's deal, these people would be homeless because of a lender. These people could be sued for non-performance because of the incompetence of a lender. And yet this lender goes home, goes to bed, and does everything. It's not one, he's not gonna see us every day at the supermarket. He's not gonna see us doing other files in the office, okay? When they're doing 20 or 30 or 40 files with us, they've got something to, let's, we better double check this. When you've got a flyer like this, this guy doesn't care. He goes home with his family and these people will be sitting in a U-Haul someplace. We don't do business that way. Unfortunately, in today's world of real estate, we have, to, we have to look for competency everywhere we can, okay? We're supposed to try for a win-win and be fair to all parties, all right? And I want you guys to keep that in mind. But what we wanna do, all right, is not spend somebody's money by being an idiot, okay? This lender in Houston has put this person in a precarious position, and thank God we've got a great seller and a great listing agent. If it could have been, I can, it could have been anybody else, that these people would be homeless and it would be the lender's fault. Pure and simple because they ordered the wrong kind of appraisal. It's absolutely incompetent at its worst. Okay, the other, we didn't see the signs up front. We didn't have to read the tea leaves, it was sitting right there in front of us. This is not going to be appraised in time. So, Yeah, we are, and, and, and Michelle actually just said, as a matter of fact, I talked to one this morning. Seller's agents are getting real bad about uh, not answering offers. I uh, talked to Linda Coster this morning. She had one. She'd made an offer. Been on the market 100, over 120 days. 
They made an offer on it. She said, yeah, I'll get it Saturday. Did nothing. I'll get them after church. Didn't get it done. So she's sending an email today with the permission of her buyer that if they don't get a response by 5 o'clock today, it's null and void, and the house has been on the market 120-something days. It's not. You see a house that's been on the market that's priced under 500000 that's been on the market over 100 days? There's a problem with the seller or the agent or both. And I'm saying that straight out there, okay? You've got a problem. Agents, seller's agents are real bad about not responding. Had another one this morning, Linda Costner had two. She called me on one. She said, you're not going to believe it. You did a video on this. Had an agent out of Dallas make an offer. You, Linda Lewis is right. Linda's one of our regional directors. She's right. You have to put an expiration on your offer. You're just going to have to put, you know, this offer expires, okay? This offer terminates at 5 o'clock this. And I normally give them 48 hours, okay? Period. Is your, and they say, well, it's the weekend. I don't care if it's the weekend. Is the house not for sale on Saturday? You took the contract, all right? You let us have showing instructions. You let us show the house. So here's the situation, guys. We're getting to the laziest among us. All right, and it is ridiculous. But once again, Linda Costner had one this morning. Outfit out of Dallas, in-house lender, in-house title company, the whole bit. She's trying to go along. she got a house in Emory. Agent makes an offer. The day after, makes a conventional offer. We had a video on this. Makes a conventional offer. The day after the option period's over, the day after the option period's over, they send over an FHA thing to sign. Nope. They can change lenders, but they cannot change the terms that the seller agreed to up front. And we had a video on this. We don't sign those FHA addendums or whatever they are. Uh, we do not sign those until after the appraisal and, and right before final underwriting. Lender's trying to sneak one in. Linda calls the other agent and says, what's going on? You didn't call me and say, hey, we got a problem. We're this was planned and orchestrated, Linda, through asking. This was planned and orchestrated from the, from the start. Make an offer conventional, switch it to FHA. Well, here's the situation. If it changes the, anything that the seller has to do, the seller doesn't have to do it. The seller doesn't have to do it. They can walk away. Okay? Still got lenders out there, still got agents out there trying this. So Linda's sending back today with the permission of the seller, always with the permission, we work for somebody on these deals, with the permission of the seller that according to lending rules it can be signed after the appraisal comes in and before final underwriting. And since you have changed financing, we will review everything until that point. Fortunately, there wasn't an appraisal waiver in there, and that kind of voids the appraisal waiver anyway. So, you know, once again, somebody trying, you know, it's, it, it's dishonest. It's not a win-win. It's deceptive. We could file complaints all day. We just don't have time. So, guys, I want to tell you, you're doing it cleaner. You're doing it better. Pay attention to what's going on out there. If you have a lender, especially one that we love and respect, tell you this is the problem. Don't wait 31 days to address it. Address it in 31 minutes. Yeah. And I would. I know they're going to say, don't put anything in special provisions. I'd put it in special provisions that this offer terminates at midnight or this offer terminates at 5 o'clock. Never midnight. I'm not at midnight anyway. This offer terminates at 5 o'clock on Monday, 5 o'clock, and put the date. Okay? And I like 5 o'clock. That's a good one. Okay? And I like to give them 48 hours. We've got some sharp ones out there. You guys are doing a good job. As I said, later we've got... We got some amazing people. We got some amazing people out there doing a great job. We got some amazing awards coming up. The girls were, uh, Carly, y'all were pulling award preliminary numbers the other day, weren't you? Because a lot of them won't change in the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. We got some killers, don't we? Mm -hmm. We got to order the. We got to order the glass like this week, because if we don't order the glass, you know, the big glass, you know, blown glass for you guys, we won't get them. I can do the medals later. You know, right at the end, that's not a big deal. But we got to get the class ordered. So they're getting the cappers. The girls will be giving you a call if you're a capper. Now that don't mean if you just capped. Some of you, a couple of you, just capped that didn't make this year's cutoff for the dinner. That means you're on next year's already. You're first in line. So you're gonna have an amazing time with that. We got something first, a first that's never happened. We have somebody on the team that capped this year. Amy Corley counts as a cap this year. Uh, we've got some amazing stuff going on. Uh, I just want to make you aware of a few things going on out there. We're blessed. 
Business is rocking. We're having the best year we've ever had. It seems like I'm always saying that. We're bringing in talent right and left. Guys, we've got talent out there that has gone to national franchises or gone to smaller offices thinking they would get help, and they're not getting the help they need. And uh, yay, Amy. Linda Lewis, yeah, absolutely. Amy Corley, two of the, the, we have two Amys from the originals left, and uh, we're, I, I, can't, I can't tell you uh, how blessed we are. And Denise and I, we get up every day, and you got to pinch yourself because this is the way it works. This is exactly the way it works and how we plan. And we do have other plans, and we have a lot of plans for you guys out there. Uh, Renee in the Longview office is just killing it. I'm very blessed. I've got, uh, I have lunch today with an agent, have lunch Wednesday with an agent, and probably I'll have lunch Friday with an agent if Carly and Jazz have anything to do with it. They're, they figured out my schedule, guys. I can't hide. But uh, I just want you to be aware of what's going on out there. Pay attention to the signs. When a lender tells you this is it, get that problem handled right now. Don't kick it down the road, okay? When somebody's got, look at the signs. Jen looked at the signs and kept telling her customer, kept telling her buyer this lender was incompetent. And they kept arguing. And now their customer's like, oh my God, what can we do? So she's had to double work on this file. She's having to work twice as hard because of a bad decision and a terrible lender that needs to be serving fries at McDonald's someplace. Absolutely horrible. Okay, still got people trying to do crooked things and switch the financing. You're allowed to switch financing, but you can't switch the burden on the seller. Okay, so the seller agreed to the terms of a conventional, and that's all they have to do. When you come, when you come with an, you know, you didn't send over an amendment saying, hey, we're switching to FHA and need this amendment signed, which then obligates the seller to all the terms of FHA. No, you just switched it. And then all of a sudden, these forms start showing up from FHA. And a good lender, like we talked about in the video, a good lender will not send those forms until after the appraisal's done and they're ready for final underwriting because at that point, there's nothing to argue over. All right? There's nothing to even bring up. Hey, the house is cleared. Everything's cleared. Let's get it done. So to do this up front, this indicates to me deceptive trade practices. And this lender was deceptive. Uh, I believe the agent knew about it uh, from what we've talked to, from what Linda talked to. Uh, the agent, she was very clear that, that she knew about it. So this is becoming common practice with a lot of folks. Just watch it. Stand your ground, okay? You don't have to do these things, okay? We want to win-win in a fair, in, in a fair deal, and we want it to be, we, we don't want deceptive, okay? Uh, we've been extremely blessed in a couple of the situations that could have gone horribly wrong, uh, especially on Jen's, to have somebody on the other side that was fantastic. I've repeated that several times. When you have two agents, no matter who they're with, working for a win-win, and a seller and a buyer working for a win-win, and it took a while, but that buyer eventually is working for a win-win, things can happen. We should have never been here. We have an incompetent lender that put these folks in this position. Uh, I want to tell you how much we love you guys. We'll let you know about the potluck coming up. Well, it won't so much be a potluck. I'm going to go buy a whole bunch of turkey from someplace. You know that. And you got to have, you got to have, like, the traditional Texas Thanksgiving, you got to have turkey and tacos, right? I mean, I, I'm going to have some tacos in here from someplace. And we just, we want to thank everybody that's been a part of this year as the year begins to wind down. 2022 is going to be even greater. Uh, I've got some big plans for 2022. We've finally got a couple of assistants that we can just absolutely love on. We're getting talent. We're growing in ways we never thought possible. Uh, expansion on the horizon. And we thank you guys. Love you guys. I want you to have a great, great week. I'll see you next time i got something to talk to you about. Have a good one.